Morning. So today, instead of doing what I typically do, I just wanted to start my day off by making a video. It's come to a point where this feels almost therapeutic, which is awesome because before it felt like work. I've got three watches, all from Seiko, and I want to kind of give you an overview on why, in my opinion, when combined, create kind of a perfect watch collection on a budget. The first watch is the Seiko SRPH77 Save the Ocean Baby Tuna. I published an article a few months ago on the entire Seiko Tuna family. This got me into doing a lot of research. I'm going to link that article down below so you can check it out. When it was designed, when it was created, it was such a revolutionary product within the dive watch space. When I bought this watch, it was just meant as a review watch. I'm going to review this watch, got it at a good price, and then I'm just going to sell it and move on. But it turns out when I saw this watch in person, yeah, this fit perfectly in my collection because at the moment I don't really have a dive watch. I had my first proper dive or dive style watch, which was also Seiko, the Seiko 5 Sea Urchin. But that watch had 100 meters of water resistance, which is fine, except that it did not have a screw down crown. The watch comes on a case size of 43.2 millimeters, a case thickness of 12.6 millimeters, and a lug to lug of 44 millimeters. You get 200 meters of water resistance, hacking, hand winding, screw down crown, 20 meters lug width. The movement inside is the Seiko in house 4R35 that gives you 41 hours of power reserve. When you look at the movement, this movement has, it leaves a lot to be desired, but it's not just about the movement. It's also about the practicality of the watch. This is a watch that it ticks a lot of boxes for me. I wanted a watch that I could wear on a strap and I could play around with different straps and it's the perfect size. Plus this has a blue dial, which is something I've been wanting for a long time. So, checks all the boxes. The second watch is maybe my least worn watch, but it's a watch that I don't think I would ever sell. And this is my vintage Creator. This is one of those watches when I showed it to my wife, she wasn't on board with this. She absolutely hated the design. And then when I got it, she just took it. So this is essentially our shared watch. This is the 771. You have a sapphire crystal on top with a case size of 27 millimeters, lug to lug of 37, 18 millimeter lug width, but you have just five millimeter thickness, which is insane. And what's even more crazy about this watch is the movement. Whether you look at the Omega Seamaster quartz or any other luxury quartz watch, unless it's a high performance, high accuracy quartz, it's gonna have around plus minus 30 seconds, 20 to 30 seconds per month accuracy. But the movement inside this watch also features that high accuracy quartz, which gives it an accuracy of plus minus 10 seconds per year. But here's the thing, you can find this watch between two to $400. This isn't as well known as Grand Seiko. Now, if you don't know this brand, let me just break it down to you in, in the most simple terms that I can. You've got the Seiko umbrella, that's the main company. And two of their most high-end sub-brands are Grand Seiko and Creador. In terms of the pricing, Grand Seiko and Creador, they start around the same price. Creador is slightly more special than Grand Seiko because Grand Seiko is global. Creador, on the other hand, is a JDM. It's a Japanese domestic market brand. They're hard to find. They're not as well known outside of Japan as Grand Seiko, for example. You're still able to find the vintage stuff at a very dirt cheap price. So it's quite a fascinating. This, this is not the same level of quality as the modern Creator, but this is a stepping stone towards that. The final watch on the list is arguably one of the most important watches that I've owned in the recent years. And this is the Seiko Baby Alpinist. This is a watch that I had to sell my Hamilton to get. And 
the reason, the main reason why I sold the Hamilton was because it looked like a tool watch, practical tool that you can use with that history of being a proper field watch, but it didn't perform like that. It has the heritage and that's the thing about Hamilton. Nobody can touch that heritage. But when it comes to the actual watch, the performance of it, you had 50 meters of water resistance with no screw down crown. And most of the complaints is that water would get inside the watch. That just made me paranoid about using it as an everyday style watch. The SPB 155, 38 millimeter case size, 12.9 millimeter thickness, dome sapphire crystal on top, lug to lug of 46 millimeters, lug width of 20 millimeters, 200 meters of water resistance, hacking hand winding, screw down crown. You have a more premium in-house movement, which is the 6R35. Everything is just perfect about this watch. It's, it's, it's very difficult to find something that I don't like about this watch. The movement gives you 70 hours of power reserve and a minus 15 plus 25 seconds of accuracy. That is one of the things that makes this so practical, especially as an everyday watch. I bought this as a reminder of all of the issues that I've had, all of the struggles, whether it's uh, related to my health, my career, but also a way for me to move forward. Every time I look at it, it reminds me of where I need to go from here on and not waiting for an opportunity, but creating opportunities and getting out there, getting things done and creating chances for yourself. That is what this watch represents. This channel is just a small part of that. Not to say that you have to have the same watches, but this is just to give you an idea that if you were to go for a small do it all collection you wanted a dive watch and then an everyday style watch and a formal dressy watch so you don't have to spend too much money what do you guys think let me know in the comments thank you for watching i i still read all of the comments it's such an awesome community that that we've created a small community but you guys are awesome thanks again for watching and i'll see you in the next one